Hello everybody, it's so good to see you. I'm Molly and this is Free, and welcome to Discoveryland Online. I hope you're ready for another amazing week of this or that. During this or that, we're battling our way through the last part of the Bible and hearing how God built his church by helping ordinary people make extraordinary decisions. We're going to get started today by making a few decisions of our own. Let's play another round of this or that. First up, fly a helicopter or ride a monster truck. Become an astronaut or become a race car driver. Get a job at a restaurant or get a job at the mall. Go away to college or get married. Ooh, those were some pretty interesting choices, weren't they? Did you notice what they all had in common? You're too young for all of them. You're not old enough to drive a monster truck or get a job. And you're definitely not old enough to go get married. Since you're a kid, you probably hear these words a lot. You're too young. But in today's Bible story, a man named Paul had something very different to say. Before we get started, though, let me tell you how our story is going to work. Throughout the Bible story, I'm going to stop and ask you what you think is going to happen next. This or that. If you get the answer right, you get one point. You can keep track of how many points you get. For more than two years, Paul and his friend Barnabas traveled to far off cities telling thousands of people about the good news of Jesus. Paul used to be called Saul before Jesus changed his life and Barnabas was his helper. During their two years together, Paul and Barnabas started a bunch of new churches all over the world. But now they were back home. Paul and Barnabas had to decide what to do next. So what do you think happened? This, they decided to visit the churches they had started to see how they were doing, or that, they decided to take a break and rest up for the next big journey. Sometime later, Paul spoke to Barnabas. Let's go back to all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord, he said. Barnabas wanted to take a man named Mark with them, but Paul didn't think it was a good idea because Mark had deserted them in the past. This was the first big disagreement that Paul and Barnabas had ever had, and it was a big one. So what do you think happened next? This, Barnabas finally agreed to leave Mark behind, or that, Paul and Barnabas split up and went different directions. Barnabas and Paul strongly disagreed with each other, so they went their separate ways. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, and Paul chose to stay with Silas. While Paul was traveling with Silas, he met a young disciple named Timothy. All of the Christians who knew Timothy said great things about him. He loved and followed Jesus with his whole heart. Paul was impressed by Timothy and wanted to take him along on their journey. But Timothy was really young. So what do you think happened next? This, Paul said he would come back someday when Timothy was older and more helpful. Or that. Paul invited Timothy to come along, even though he was young. Even though Timothy was young, Paul believed that God could do big things through him. So he invited Timothy to come along on his journey. With the help of Timothy, Paul and Silas told a bunch of new people about Jesus, and they started a bunch of new churches. Timothy did such a good job that Paul eventually sent him to start new churches all by himself. At first, things seemed to be doing great. But then many years later, something bad happened. What do you think happened? This, Paul was arrested and thrown in jail for telling people about Jesus, or Paul got sick on one of his journeys and died. One day, Paul was arrested and thrown into jail for telling people about Jesus. As Paul sat in jail, though, he couldn't stop thinking about Timothy. Paul loved Timothy like he was his own son. He had to come up with a way to talk to Timothy and encourage him to keep telling others about Jesus. So what do you think happened next? This, Paul wrote two letters and sent them to Timothy. Or that, Paul invited Timothy to visit him at the prison. While Paul was in prison, he wrote two different letters and sent them to Timothy. Both of the letters are now books of the Bible. They're in the New Testament. The first letter is called 1 Timothy. And the second letter is called 2 Timothy. 
In his first letter, Paul told Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. Even though Timothy was young, Paul believed that God could do big things through him. And he was right. Even though Paul was in prison, Timothy continued telling people about the good news of Jesus. With the help of young Timothy, God's church continued to grow and the good news of Jesus spread throughout the world. Now let's stop for a minute and think about these questions. How old do you think you should be before you do something like Timothy did? Why? What kind of things could God do through a kid your age? A lot of times people tell kids, you're too young for that. And sometimes they're right. Kids are too young to drive a car or get a job, but that doesn't mean kids can't do important things. That's why Paul invited Timothy to be a part of his team. Even though Timothy was young, Paul knew that God could do big things through him. In fact, in Paul's first letter to Timothy, he told Timothy about five ways that he could be a good example to the other believers. God says that you're never too young to be a good example for other believers. You can be an example through your speech. Let your words be appropriate, truthful, and kind. You can be an example through your conduct. Let your actions show that you love and follow Jesus. You can be an example through the way that you love. Show your love to everyone, even those who are hard to love. You can be an example through your faith. Read your Bible and spend time praying to God every day. And finally, you can be an example through your purity. Stop sin before it happens. Say no when the devil tempts you to do the wrong thing. Isn't that cool? You might have to wait to drive a car, but you don't have to wait a single minute to do something big for God. You can be a good example to the other believers right now. That's what our Bible verse for today says. Let's take a look at it together. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Even though you're young, God has a big job for you. You get to set the example you get to show everyone what it looks like to follow Jesus through your speech, your conduct, your love, your faith, and your purity. When people see your example, they'll be encouraged to follow Jesus too. The job doesn't start when you get older. It doesn't even start tomorrow. It starts right now. So let's pray and ask Him to help us be the best example ever. So Lord, we thank you that we get to be your light. We get to shine bright for you, Lord, and you help us do that through our actions, through our words, and through our faith in you, Lord. And so we pray for all of the kids that they would be a great example for you and that they would have the boldness to share your love with others, Lord. And so it's in your name we pray. Amen. It's time for our blessing now. May we all be reminded, no matter how young we are, to be an example through our words, our actions, our love, our faith, and our purity. Here are today's respond time prompts. Remember, you can choose whichever ones you'd like to do. It's up to you. Just remember, this is your chance to respond to our lesson and talk to God about it. Today's prayer prompt is to write a prayer to God and thank Him for giving you a big job to do, even though you're young. Ask Him to help you be a good example to others. Today's journal prompt is, do you ever struggle to be a good example to others in your words, actions, love, faith, or purity? Write a letter to God and tell Him about it. Today's Bible prompt is to read it for yourself, Acts 15, 36-41, and 16, 1-3. Draw a picture of the story or write to God about your favorite part of the story and tell Him why you liked it. Today's art prompt is, what can you do to set a good example for other Christians? Draw a picture of it. 